Earthlings, how you doing today? Welcome to First Contact Radio. Glad you could be here. Today is the 26th of November. Sun sign in. Sagittarius moon sign is making a transition from Capricorn to Aquarius. Right now we're kind of going through those last phases of Capricorn. 9.30 we go into this stage or phase called the Void of Course where we're in the holding pattern waiting until we approach that next sign which is 1.23 p.m. So between 9.30 and 1.23 is sort of that uh, holding pattern. If you find that that time uh, there's a little bit of uh, lack of clarity it might be attributed to this because remember we're changing from one element to the other in our subconscious mind. Think about how you change gears on a car you know, you switch from one to the next. Sometimes it takes a moment to catch up. So that's kind of where we're at. Okay, good way to think about that. So we go from Capricorn and Earth sign to Aquarius and Air sign. Earth is all about the physical world, the body, physical things. Air sign gets about the mind, words and actions, things like that. All right, uh, this afternoon we have a sign right here, the sun sign, Sagittarius, and the moon sign are going to be in a aspect with each other, a sextile aspect, so there's going to be a nice good flow of energy between that Sagittarian idea and the Aquarian ideal. And then as we get into the evening, a little bit after that. The first one starts at nine, about 9.28. And then the sun, about 40, 50 minutes later, is going to be in a square with Pluto. Where's that Neptune? Here, let me see. With uh, Neptune, excuse me. So, encouraged to take things from a new perspective. And then Venus and the Wounded Healer, about an hour after that, a little more than an hour, get into a aspect where there's a lesson to be learned there. So, today seems to be a good day of learning some lessons by the end of the day. Maybe some things to consider as we move into Thanksgiving and the time of thankfulness. Okay, we've come out of this Capricorn. One thing about Capricorn is illusion. We've had a lot of activities here in America that we've had to look through what we are seeing to see past any illusions and now Aquarius is taking us into the place where our mind is going to be a little bit more clear so we could think about things in a more clearer way okay our placement here for today we have Capricorn right down here moving to Aquarius which is right over here and our sun sign, Sagittarius, is right here. The numerology for today is number 8. And the way we arrive at that, at the number 8, is we add up the 1 plus 1 plus 2 plus 6 plus 2 plus 0 plus 1 plus 4. All that adds up to number 17. Here's how we get to there. 1 plus 7 equals 8. Okay. So 8 is our numerology for today. 
8 is the number that relates to this card right here. It's a bridge that bridges together between our severity and our mercy. Between our extreme strength and extreme humility. Okay, uh, for today, why don't we take a look at, let's see here, we, we've got our Sagittarius, we're aware of this, this is where we're at for this month, the sun sign, our moon sign right now, going from here to here. So let's take a look at Aquarius, to understand that better, what it is that it's asking of us. So Aquarius is related to the tarot card of the star. Tarot card of the star is about meditation. The Hebrew letter assigned to Azadi means fish hook. We put bait on a hook, we drop the hook into the water with the bait on it, and it brings up the fish according to the bait that's on it. So the whole idea is that we think of the same analogy when we're looking into our own mind. The fish hook is the line, the question we're going to put in, the bait is the question. We put the question on the hook. We go into a state of meditation, we drop that hook down into the subconscious, and we allow that question just to uh, to be there, to attract to it the right answer, and then we bring that answer up. Okay, that is what happens with this idea here. The Hebrew letter Zadi represents or signifies a fish hook. The reference to angling is closely allied with another meaning of this key, namely meditation. What is symbolized by the fish hook? is the means of investigating the unseen quest, research into the depths of the inner consciousness symbolized by water. Such fishing for inner knowledge is the function of meditation. The great central star is the symbol of the life power which is concentrated and radiated from all of the stars in the universe. The seven smaller stars refer to seven centers of force in the human organism called interior stars or another name form as chakras. They also refer to the seven planets of astrology. The tree is the brain and the nervous system. The bird on its branch is an ibis, sacred to Hermes. Isis, or nature, is symbolized by the kneeling woman. The left leg supports her weight and rests upon the earth or physical plane. The right leg, leg maintains her balance and rests upon the waves and the surface, thus indicating balance attained by the control of vibration. The five streams of water are the five senses. Revelation is the state of unfoldment attributed to key 17. Now, one thing that is very important here, notice the use of the word Isis and the name Isis. It says Isis or nature is symbolized by the kneeling woman. Okay, in no way is this connected to what we're hearing about the Isis organization out there. Sometimes what happens in society words that have certain meanings you have organizations or groups or governments take those words and they tear those words apart they blaspheme those words they give them meaning so when you hear them you think something bad so isis who's connected to a lot of spiritual aspects a lot of spiritual things down throughout history and esoteric philosophy and esoteric science has a lot of information regarding this the governments of the world want you to believe this is bad for some reason, the term. So they associate now ISIS with an organization that is doing bad things. We don't want to connect the two. Let them play their games. Let them distort those words. But those who know, those with ears, let them hear and you know that there's a deeper meaning of what's going on. So as not to get caught up and fooled by their nonsense. All right, uh, the current moon phase is a waxing moon 20 percent of the way full looking up into the sky says look for mars left of the crescent moon and twilight excuse me the moon now shines near alpha and beta capricorni at night fall as shown above depending on your location both alpha and beta cap are wide double stars for binoculars alpha is easy to resolve beta is somewhat less so with its narrow separation and great brightness difference it's still summer triangle season. The triangle's brightest star is Vega, well up in the west, northwest after dinner time. The brightest star above Vega is Deneb. The triangle's third star, Altair, is farther to Vega's left. Okay. So 
So here's the sky. Here's where we're going to see Mars tonight. Capricornus. Okay. On the Dream Spell Oracle, it's a yellow lunar human. The Mayan Zulkin, it's a seven Chikan. So the yellow human would be right here. And then here would be the seven. Where is it at? Where is it at? Right there. So that's the difference of where we're at. Okay. In this particular wave spell, it says we're in the wave spell of the monkey, which is all about magic. We happen to be right down in the middle pillar, which is the pillar that I might consider the pillar of magic. It's the pillar where everything revolves around it. These first six and these last six. So the center point is very important. So there we are with the monkey right down in the middle with the magic. Today we're at the free will aspect of magic, understanding what magic is and what it isn't. Yellow lunar human, I polarize in order to influence stabilizing wisdom. I seal the process of free will with the lunar tone of challenge. I'm guided by the power of flowering. Solar wind, 317.1 kilometers per second. Planetary K index is quiet in the two range. One coronal hole starting to come around. We'll see if it faces us. Big one on the bottom. M-class flare possibilities at 30%. X-class at 5 Geomagnetic storm activity is 15% in the mid-latitudes. It's moving up to 25% in the high latitudes. And on the Jewish calendar, today is for Kislev. For Kislev. Daily thought, child delight. The child delights in the simple things in life. Sometimes that delight could lead in the wrong direction, but the delight in itself is good. We need to embrace and nurture the delight while wearing or weaning it from those things unwholesome. All right, very good. That gets us started for today. Let's jump over to UFO News because it's up next. This is the UFO News with Joshua Poet. Alrighty, Dirk. Thank you very much. Let's jump over and see what we have. Our first sighting takes us to Ontario, Canada, November 25th, which was yesterday. We have an object right here. This is a good catch out of a cloud orb. They are often seen around the storm clouds or running from cloud to cloud. This one appears dark, but they do take on the color of the clouds around them. There may have been more of them in the cloud. Which cloud caused the storm to form? They sometimes make the storms on purpose for experiments, other times by accidents. Okay, the eyewitness says, I do not believe this is a UFO. The object is quite small and full screen will be most helpful. Yet this is another dark oval that I've been able to record at high altitude with cloud formation. The video itself is 6 minutes, 21 seconds of him describing what is going on here. There's the sighting. You can see it briefly. Okay, and of course as always when you right here when you raise this up or uh, enlarge the screen you see much better what's going on but right there in the middle we have something all right here we have a sighting over Hollywood California okay we see a bunch of folks here on their balcony there we go. That's a nice whole grouping of them. And yeah, nice good group of them. And this is looking uh, west towards the ocean. All right. From Hollywood, let's jump over to this one here. This is from 
the Huffington Post boomerang UFO zigzags over New Hampshire. UFO sightings don't always get media attention immediately after they occur. When they do, however, these stories are often backed with surprise, even for an old man like me who's been reporting on these things for decades. I've written about pilots, for example, who rarely speak about the UFO encounters out of fear of ridicule. After all, who wants to fly with a pilot who sees things in the sky? That's a career killer. There's just one reason timing isn't all that important to my line of work. The real question is the evidence, and that largely comes down to the witness's credibility. Is there a photograph or a video? Could that account be corroborated? If the answer to either of these questions is yes, it doesn't matter if the sighting was a week ago or a year ago. Suddenly, it's an unexplained phenomena. I recently stumbled upon such a story, and it began with a personal surprise. The UFO part of the tale started around 8 p.m. on October 5th in the rural north end of Concord, New Hampshire. Ben Spiegel was hanging around with a neighbor when something caught their attention in the distance, somewhat above the trees. As it turns out, 15-year-old Spiegel is my nephew. While I was in New Hampshire earlier this month, he casually mentioned that he may have seen a UFO in October. When I asked him to describe it, he did better than that. He showed me a picture he took of the thing, and that got me really interested. We saw what looked like a bright orb in the sky, and something that we thought was a helicopter seemed to be following it, Ben told me. We didn't know what it was, and I took a picture of it on my iPod. When I zoomed in, we would see that it was a V-shape that was probably as bright as when you look at a plane from the blinks. A plane that blinks, but this thing wasn't blinking. There was a red blinking off and on, and that's what made me think it was a helicopter. Ben was struck by the odd how odd thing it moved it was zigzagging across the sky not fast but it kept going back and forth it made a turn went up down back forth as it was circling around it went and circled again the object finally disappeared behind the trees and we didn't see it anymore the whole thing lasted about five minutes all right so there you go there's more to this article and this story Father and son see rectangle UFO over power lines. A father and a son never expected to see a rectangle UFO over the power lines. In early November 2014, at about 9.30 p.m., Albert and his son, Ronnie, were driving just west past of the Oakdale Mall in Johnson City, New Jersey, New York. That's when something caught Albert's attention. I introduced an object with a red and white lights, a cube or rectangle shape hovering near a power line tower. The lights were static and were not blinking, he said. Something just didn't seem right, so Albert slowed down his car to a crawl to get a good look to make sense of what he had just seen out of the corner of his eye. It appeared to be at about 500 feet or more above the ground. It was large but not huge. Albert's son Ronnie was the first, was in the front seat and was just as curious. He rolled down the window to get a better look. Meanwhile, Albert safely pulled the car off of the shoulder of the road. With the window down, the only thing the father and son could hear was the occasional sound of the passing car, but heard nothing from the direction of the rectangle-shaped object hovering near the power lines. Ronnie was fascinated by whatever it was, exclaiming to his dad, It's about the size of three cars. Ronnie noted that it was starting to move in a northeast direction. This was the opposite direction that the car had been traveling to, so Albert turned it around. They began to follow the object up Oakdale Road for about two miles, but the rectangular-shaped object was pulling away at increasing speed. After a few minutes, the father and the son lost sight of the unusual aerial object. It certainly wasn't any kind of conventional aircraft, that's for sure, Albert remarks. Okay, it's a story by Cheryl Custo over at UFO Digest. Is here an expert suggest UFO cases be taken seriously? Speakers of a panel discussion held on November 12, 2014, suggested that the government should take UFO reports seriously. Dr. Richard Haynes revealed that the National Aviation Reporting Center, otherwise known as NARCAP, has collected hundreds of UFO cases. Haynes, a co founder of NARCAP and NASA 
former NASA scientist, said that ignorance is the start of science. He explained that the public is still ignorant of what they see, what they are dealing with. He pointed out that the government isn't taking the topic seriously, so his role or mission is to bring UFO subject to the attention of the aviation industry, starting from the union level, airline level, and up to the government level. He said that he can't understand why he finds doing it in foreign countries easy, but has a difficulty in America. Another panelist, Leslie Kean, said that the more she studied the UFO phenomenon, the more she realized that she could not write it off. Keen is co-founder of the Coalition for Freedom of Information, investigative journalist and author. Her first story about UFOs was published in 2000 when she said she charged, changed her whole life. She explained that studying UFOs is not like you learn ways of explaining it, but you get more knowledge about its mystery and incredible documentation available out there. During Keen's presentation, she highlighted several major UFO cases and presented UFO photographs, including a shiny circular object caught in a photo in 1971 over Costa Rica by a government mapping plane. The plane was equipped with a camera strapped underneath it, and the camera took a photograph of the ground every 17 seconds. Keen explained that the dark area in the picture is a lake, the lighter area is the land, the disc-shaped object is flying above the lake, according to Keen. Keen said that France and Chile have staffers dedicated to investigating UFO cases seriously. Keen believes that the same is needed here in the U.S. She was trying to say that scientists should get involved in investigating UFO cases and that the U.S. government agency will allow scientists to engage with UFO subject is required in order for this to happen. Former U.S. Air Force Colonel Charles Haight made the most fascinating presentation of the night in a panel discussion on November 12th held at the American University. Halt claimed that he is one of the witnesses of the famous series of UFO sightings in 1980 in England, which is now known as the Rendlesham Forest Incident. Halt said that when he heard the UFO report, he went into the forest to check it out. He was also surprised to see three indentations on the ground that were evenly spaced. He also noticed that Geiger counter registered high levels of radiation while he was in the area. During the investigation, Hall said that the flying oval-shaped object was seen by him and several other military members. This object reportedly glowed bright orange and red and appeared to be dripping with molten metal. Holt said that upon seeing the strange object, they stood there in awe. They tried to think of the explanation, but they were shocked when it moved towards them, it moved through the trees in a horizontal manner while it bobbed up and down to avoid hitting trees. Halt wished he wasn't out there during the time as I was getting beyond him. As it was getting beyond him, Halt revealed that they watched the mysterious UFO for a few minutes until suddenly and silently exploded like fireworks into five white objects and disappeared. He ended his presentation by suggesting to the audience to keep an open mind and he can assure them that mankind is not alone. Okay. Next, we're going to talk about Mars here. U.S. physicist, alien nuclear bomb wiped out Mars. Okay, so before we go on and before I read any of this article to you, I just want to remind you that this information is information that when we uh, study the work of the ancient astronaut theory, we find that this has been presented long time ago. So, let's see what this says. A U.S. physicist claims evidence that an ancient Mars civilization was wiped out by nuclear bombed aliens. He warns that evidence of a past nuclear attack on Mars raises concerns about a similar attack on Earth. Dr. John Bradenburg, a plasma physicist, obtained his Ph.D. from the University of California, Davis. He's an expert in propulsion technologies and now a former consultant on space missile defense and directed energy weapons. He currently conducts research work at Orbital Technologies in Madison, Wisconsin. Brandenburg is scheduled to present on Saturday at the 2014 Annual Fall Meeting of the American Physical Society Prairie Section in Mammoth, Illinois, the astounding theory that a nuclear bomb wiped out an ancient civilization. All right, so there you go. If you want to hear more about what he has to say about it, Go to the location, check out the link, and here one last story ties in with what we know of our evolution. Did ancient man interbreed with a mysterious species? Study says yes. 
In a world of archaeology, DNA findings are turning out our idea of the history of ancient man upside down. Neanderthals interbred with Homo sapiens and some humans carry Neanderthal DNA. Neanderthals in the past were betrayed as stupid and primitive, but archaeologists are changing their minds. A cave painting in Spain created by Neanderthals and their burial rituals brings to archaeologists a different view of the once thought primitive giant. Taller, stronger, and bigger cranium, Neanderthal is another example of Goliath, the giant felled by the small David. Then the Philom were the children of the sons of God who interbred with the daughters of Eve. The Bible story mainly may shed some light on man's history. Nephilim and Theanderthal share the same similarities in their stories, especially in their large sizes. Many of the Nephilim were red-haired and blondes. They died out 30,000 to 40,000 years when an instinction-level event occurred on Earth. The Earth turned into a desolate place to live with temperate temp temperatures dropping and scientists had discovered interbreeding between many species occurred during this time, such as the Denovicians, another subspecies of Homo sapiens with a mysterious unknown species from Asia. The research findings were presented to the Royal Society last year. The mysterious species from Asia is not human or Neanderthal. Then the Denisovian DNA found in a Siberian cave has scientists stumped at who this mysterious species is and where it came from. What it begins to suggest is that we're looking at the Lord of the Rings type world that there were many humanoid populations our Thomas an evolutionary geneticist at the University of College says Orion constellation comes from the story of the giant Orion who was the son of the god Zeus could a reference to the ancient population of the large giant Neanderthal ancestors the Neanderthal may have known about the ancient constellation of Orion because on a prehistoric mammoth ivory cave in a const in an ivory carved in the in constellation of Orion, mankind's history is changing more, archaeology discovers appear. So who is this mysterious species where they reference in the Bible and called sons of God? Stay tuned. All right, there you have it. That is our UFO news for today. I'll be right back and we shall continue on. Coming to our circle, great spirit, fill our souls with peace. Let us continue on. So today I thought we would talk about Nostradamus. You've heard of Nostradamus before. Nostradamus made all kind of predictions. So let's just start at the beginning here with a little bit of a bio about who Nostradamus is. Physician Nostradamus believed that he could predict the future and published his predictions in the prophecies. Some believe that they have or will come true. Okay, so Nostradamus was a scientist. He was born December 14th, 1503. So his birthday is coming up in just a few weeks. He died in 1566. That made him 63 years of age. Studied at the University of Avignon in Montpelier. Okay, and his place of birth was in France as was his place of death. Nostradamus was born uh, Michel de Nostradam in saint Remy de providence France, 1503. He studied medicine, became a physician, treating plague victims throughout France and Italy. It's believed he had psychic awakening. He began to practice the occult and make predictions of the future, which he published in The Prophecies. Many people today believe his predictions 
have come true or will in the future. Astrologer and physician born Michel de Nostradam, December 14th, or 21, 1503, French astrologer and physician known for his prophecies, which he published in a book entitled The Prophecies, which have become famous worldwide. He was born in the south of France, one of nine children, to Rainier de saint Remy and her husband, Jean de Nostradam, a well-to-do grain dealer and part-time notary of Jewish descent. Nostradam's grandfather, Guy Gostonet, had converted to Catholicism a half-century earlier and changed the family name to Nostradam, in part to avoid persecution during the Inquisition. Little is known of his childhood, but evidence indicates that he was very intelligent as he quickly advanced through school. Early in his life, he was tutored by his maternal grandfather, Jean de saint Remy, who saw his great intellect and potential in their grandson. During this time, young Nostradamus was taught the rudiments of Latin, Greek, Hebrew, and mathematics. It is believed that his grandfather also introduced him to the ancient rites of Jewish tradition and the celestial science of astrology, giving Nostradamus his final exposure to the ideas of the heavens and how they drive human destiny. Okay, we can go on and on a little bit. By 1504, Nostradamus, his visions had become an integral part of his works in the almanacs, and he decided to channel all of his energies into a massive opus entitled Centuries. He planned to write ten volumes, which would contain a hundred predictions forecasting the next two thousand years. In 1555, he published Les Prophecies, Les Prophecies, a collection of his major long-term predictions. Possibly feeling vulnerable to religious persecution, he devised a method of obscuring the prophecies' meanings by using quatrains rhymed, four-lined phrases, and a mixture of other languages such as Greek, Italian, Latin, and Provencal, a dialect of southern France. Oddly enough, Nostradamus enjoyed a good relationship with the Roman Catholic Church. It is believed he never faced prosecution for heresy by the Inquisition because he didn't extend his writings to the practice of magic. Nostradamus ran into some controversy with his predictions, as some thought he was a servant of the devil, and others said he was a fake or an insane. However, many more believed the prophecies were spiritually inspired. He became famous and in demand of the Europe's elite, Catherine de Medici, the wife of Henry, King Henry II of France, was one of Nostradamus's great admirers. After reading his almanacs of 1555, where he hinted at unnamed threats to her family, she summoned him to Paris to explain and draw up horoscopes for her children. A few years later, she made him counselor and physician in ordinary to King Henry's court. In 1556, while serving in his capacity, Nostradamus also explained another prophecy from centuries one, which was assumed to refer to King Henry. The prophecy told of a young lion who would overcome an older one on the battlefield. The young lion would pierce the eye of the older one, and he would die a crucial de cruel death. Nostradamus warned the king that he should avoid ceremonial jousting. Three years later, when King Henry was forty-one years old, he died in a jousting match, when a lance from his opponent pierced the king's visor and entered his head between the eye, deep into the brain. He held on to his life for ten agonizing days before finally dying of infection. Nostradamus claimed to base his published predictions on judicial astrology, the art of forecasting future events by calculation of the planets and the stellar bodies in relationship to the earth. His sources include passages from classical historians like Plutarch, as well as medieval chroniclers from whom he seems to have borrowed liberally. In fact, many scholars believed he paraphrased ancient end-of-the-world prophecies, mainly in the Bible and then through astrological readings of the past, projected these events into the future. There's also evidence not everyone was enamored with Nostradamus's predictions. He was criticized by professional astrologers of the day for incompetence and assuming that comparative horos horoscopy, the comparison of future planetary configurations with those accompanying past known events, could predict the future. And then right here, Nostradamus suffered from gout and arthritis for much of his adult life. In the last years, the condition turned to edema and dropsy, where he had enormous amounts of fluid accumulated underneath the skin. And then he died in 50, 1566. Okay, so that's a little bit of a history of who 
Nostradamus is. Okay, so we've got a little bit of this history here. Now, if we jump over to this next one here, this is some of his predictions, things he said. So, check out some of these. Michel de Nostradam was a 16th century French seer. We don't have many seers these days. Nostradamus studied astrology and the various occult scientists and used these to predict the future. He is best known for the Prophecies, a collection of French quatrains published in 1555. So are these prophecies worthy predictions of the future, or are they merely vague observations retrofitted to match past events? Here's a list of some of the most famous. All right. First one, the end of the world. And we go down, second one. And here it has, uh, remember when the world was going to end in 1984, okay. what about 98 or 2000? The doomsayer always warned that Nostradamus said the world was going to end. He never sit, and he never got anything wrong. These days, 2012 is the trendiest day for the end of the world prophecies. Okay, so let me make a uh, comment on this one here. Dolores Cannon. The work of Dolores Cannon has been quite incredible. She has a number of books out there. One of them is a book about Nostradamus. Nostradamus began to speak through the clients that she was working with when she was doing her, her hypnosis sessions. So she had these long discourses with someone who said that they were Nostradamus. And one of the things explained to her was how we've gotten his information wrong that he didn't say these things definitely were going to happen, that they were patterns, that the way that we were going, this is where we were headed, but that we could change this, and that's what we were missing. We were missing out on the part that we could change this because it is not being reiterated to us. And so that was his message that came through loud and clear to her that she put into the book and that she talked about, that we're not following the path that we need to, that we are misinterpreting things, and that we can change. And what he shows here is what's going to happen if we don't make a change. Okay, so let's make these change. Uh, number two, September 11th, earth-shaking fire from the center of the earth will cause tremors around the new city. Two great rocks will war for a long time. Then Aresthusia will redden a new river. Okay, uh, World War II and Hitler, two of the greatest ones from Asia and Africa, from the Rhine and the Lower Danube, they will said to have become cries, tears at Malta and the Lugarian side. Also, from the depths of the west of Europe, a young child will be born of poor people. He who by his tongue will seduce a great troop, his fame will increase towards the realm of the east. Atomic Bomb Near the gates and within two cities, there will be scourges, the likes of which is never seen. Famine within plague, people put out by steel, crying to the great immortal God for relief. Louis Pasteur, the lost thing is discovered hidden for many centuries. Pasteur will be celebrated almost as a godlike figure. This is when the moon completes her grand cycle, but by other rumors. He shall be dishonored. JFK and RFK assassinations. The great man will be struck down in the day by a thunderbolt, an evil deed foretold by the bearer of a petition. According to this prediction, another falls at night time. Conflict at Reims, London, and a pestilence in Tuscany. Katrina. The cities of Tours, Orleans, Bios, Anglers, Reims, and Nates are troubled by sudden change. Tents will be pitched by people of foreign tongues. Rivers, darts at pennies, shaking of land and sea. Princess Diana's death. Okay. 
the penultimate of the surname of prophet, will take Diana for his day and rest. He will wander because of a frantic head and delivering a great people from subjugation. London fire, the blood of the just, will commit a fault at London. Burnt through lighting of twenty fires, the sixth, the ancient lady will fall from her high place. Several of the same sect will be killed. In the French Revolution, from the enslaved populace songs, chants and demands, while princes and lords are held captives in prisons. These will in the future, by headless idiots, be received as divine prayers. Okay, so there's ten. And I also have this uh, page I brought up for you. It's called Nostradamus.org, which pretty much says, Welcome to Nostradamus.org. And all that is Nostradamus, his life, his quatrains, and great links to other Nostradamus resources. Your visit may also touch on the spiritual, the supernatural, or even the skeptical. All are welcome to Nostradamus.org. All right, that's available. And then here, one more link, are prophecies of Nostradamus. Some of them are read. And there's a lot here. A lot here. So... Let's see. Let's read the pre preface. Let's see what he has to say here. It says preface by Michel of Nostradamus to his prophecies. Greetings and happiness to Caesar Nostradamus, my son, your late arrival. Caesar Nostradamus, my son, has made me spend much time in constant nightly reflection so that I could communicate with you by letter and leave you this reminder after my death for the benefit of all men of which the Divine Spirit has vouched me to know by means of astronomy. And since it was the Almighty's will that you were not born here in this regard, region, and I do not want to talk of the years to come but of the months during which you will struggle to grasp and understand the work I shall be compelled to leave to you after my death, assuming that it will not be possible for me to leave you such writing as may be destroyed to the injustice of the age. The key to the hidden prediction which you will inherit will be locked inside my heart. Also bear in mind that the events which described have not yet come to pass, and that all is ruled and governed by the power of the Almighty God inspiring us not by Bacchic frenzy, nor by enchantments, but by astronomical assurances, predictions that have been made throughout the inspiration of divine will alone, and the spirit of prophecy in particular. On numerous occasions and over a long period of time I have predicted specific events far in advance, attributing all of the workings of divine power and inspiration, together with other fortunate or unfortunate happenings, foreseen in their full unexpectedness, which have already come to pass in various regions of the earth, yet I have wished to remain silent and to abandon my work because of the injustice, not only of the present time, but also for most of the future, I will not commit to writing. Since governments, sects, and countries will undergo such sweeping changes diametrically opposed to what now obtains, that were I to relate events to come, those in power now, Monarchs, leaders, and sects and religions would find these too different from their own imaginings that they would be led to condemn. What later centuries will learn how to see and understand. Bear in mind also our Savior's words. Do not give anything holy to the dogs, nor throw pearls in front of swine, lest they trample them with their own feet, and turn on you and tear you apart. For this reason I withdrew my pen from the paper, because I wished to amplify my statement touching the vulgar advant by means of ambiguous and enigmatic comments about future causes, even those closest to us and those I have perceived, so that some human change which may come to pass shall not unduly scandalize delicate sensibilities. The whole world work is written in a nebulous rather than plain pro plainly prophetic form, so much so that you have hidden these things from the wise and the circumspect that is, from the mighty and the rulers, and you have purified those things for the small and the poor. And though Almighty's God's will revealed unto these prophets with the power to perceive what is distant and thereby to foretell things to come, for nothing can be accomplished without this faculty, 
whose power and goodness work so strongly in those to whom it is given that while they contemplate themselves these powers are subject to other influence arising from the force of good this warmth and strength of prophecy invests us with its influence as the sun's rays both animate and inanimate entities all right there's a lot more to this i'm not going to read any more i'm going to leave this for you to do but very interesting so there you go and uh, i may i may cuz i'm looking to you know do something on a on a regular basis so we can continue along i, li I like to do that like we follow the studies so maybe we'll follow the works of nostradamus for a while really get to understand some of his prophecies and his words okay in the meantime i'm going to jump over to an article here at in 5d this is a article about black magic spells reversing disney's black magic spells michelle walling disney has created a new form of god worship black magic is being used to subliminally brainwash children as young as six years old into worshiping sexteen idols in preparation for the big debut into preteen sex this is one of the most important topics of today for our future generations and spreading the word will inevitably reverse the spell sex is big business but the general public has no idea how children are brought into the brainwashing mix we have all seen how the inconceivable narrow waist of the barbie was introduced in 1959 but we still played with them and bought them for our children and grandchildren because we were programmed ourselves as children the television has been the biggest tool used by those who wish to steer our attention and dollars away from the wholesome family activities to the latest fashion fad which is accomplished by a catchy jingle laced with subliminal messages for our children if i were to guess i would say that the biggest target market of sex on television has shifted from age men age twenty to forty to younger girls under thirteen the goal of the illuminati is to sugarcoat the introduction of sex to children and the age gets younger and younger each year all top-level illuminati members are forced to be introduced to pedophilia many childhood hollywood actors become prey for top illuminati pedophilia rings somehow america has allowed disney to creep into the back door of their homes in order to introduce children to sex and to fool them into thinking that it is acceptable to be sexy and promiscuous at a very young age the average age that a child first has consensual sex has changed dramatically from the 1950s to today if i were to take a guess i would say that because of religious brainwashing of abstinence before marriage the average age of a person's first sexual encounter was probably eighteen back in the fifties the sixties liberated sex that would that i would guess that the age dropped to around sixteen over the years it has alarmingly dropped below thirteen in my observation the illuminati reptilian and dracos that are feasting on the sexual energy of humans are not stealing this energy from the younger kids through disney subliminal messaging what they are doing is preparing them to act sexy dress sexy and accept sex very readily when the time comes for their inner urges and sexual desires to become active they are also causing a premature initiation of the sexual energy be to begin to arise the following video was so profound that it prompted this writing of the article it is very thorough and is only 38 minutes long the information needs to be spread far and wide so the question is how have we allowed this to happen sex in general in disney is is everywhere and almost unavoidable since the media is controlled by the illuminati they control the brainwashing of everyone who has been primed for programming by every outlet of media and consumerism it's not just the little girls who are targeted i watched a video of one of my spiritual facebook friends little boy probably six years old gyrating and pumping to pop rap music on a youtube video it seems very cute to watch a kid dance but seeing the pelvic gyration of this kid really got my attention i raised my child before i had my great awakening where i began to break free of my own programming i know what it feels like to be lost in survival and to work forty hours a week drive to and from work ten hours a week cook and clean twelve hours a week spend twelve hours of my week with my child feel exhausted the rest of the time i did it for fifteen years and i am just as guilty as everyone who raised their child in front of the television the whole system was brilliantly planned to get us to plop our children in front of the television for our entertainment the disney channel was in my home my eighteen-year-old son now makes his own choices as to what he watches on television 
He knows that I do not watch I do not watch TV now, and he has been programmed to think that I am weird because of it. He does not have the capability of understanding anything regarding ELF and subliminal programming that comes through the television, although I have tried the soft cell approach to him. There is a fine line we cannot cross where there are adult children where they will completely shut the door if you cram the truth down their throats. They cannot help it because their programming is so strong. About the one thing that I can do at this point is to be a good role model and allow him to feel my energy that is television free and I hope that he realizes the difference of energy signatures between his mother and his friend's mothers. Okay. More to the article of how it's changed. But uh, yeah, I think this is a very serious issue. And let me share with you a personal experience I had with this. I was visiting some friends. They had kids. And there was a gathering of, of adults and children at this event. And the television was on in the background as people were talking. And on the television was the Disney Channel. To my surprise, one of the college-age students who happened to be there suddenly spoke up during the middle of the conversation and says, well, what is this on television? At which point another one of the adults in the room chimed in and said, yes, what is this? Something about this seems very creepy. And everyone stopped to watch for a few moments. And all of the adults in the room came to the decision right then and there that what they were seeing and experiencing on the Disney Channel was extremely creepy and they couldn't put their finger on it. All they knew is that there was this strange creepy feeling that everyone was picking up. It didn't feel right and it inspired them to want to change the channel. Now, I hadn't told any of these people about what I knew about any of this. I just found it extremely fascinating that they picked up on their own. This is what's going on out there, folks. And when people aren't paying attention, remember, it's called programming. When you watch television, you are subject to being programmed. Okay, like a computer is programmed, your mind is a computer. Whereas a brain initiative has been put forth, DARPA is in charge of the brain initiative program. DARPA wants to map the brain. Programs like the Disney Channel program your brain, which works like a computer. You see how it all comes together? If you're not in charge of your own brain, somebody else will be. And believe me, there's somebody else out there that wants to be. So you got to pay attention to these things. Very, very important. Very important what we're listening to. Very important the, the energies that we're dealing with. Very important. One thing about magic, too. Magic. Hollywood. Druids used to carve their magic wands out of wood that was referred to as Hollywood or Holywood. It came from a tree that they believed was very sacred, the oak tree. So there was a spiritual implication in what they were doing. They were using their wands to create something holy. Okay. Over the years, Holywood or Hollywood has evolved. Hollywood is a magic wand. Hollywood is the name for a city where all of these movies are made. And we heard the term as movie magic. At the beginning of all of the Disney things, what do you see? You see Mickey Mouse waving a magic wand. Movie magic. But if a magic wand is waved by a black magician, which is out there putting out darkness and these sexual perverted things that are out there in the world, that's what one will create. But you need to have a white magician to overcome that by creating white magic. Bringing in God. Bringing in the spirit that needs to be brought in. Very, very important issue. Great article by Michelle. Important that people pay attention, especially if you have kids. Take time out to know what they're listening to. What they're watching. See how it affects you. And you might truly be surprised if you pay attention on what is really going on. All right, this is our channeled message for today. Here we go. Zapata, November 23rd, 2014. Hello, my dear ones. It has been a while since I have spoken through this channel, 
but nonetheless always extend my ever-present abiding love to you. I take you in my arms of love now again in this moment. You have traversed many a difficult turn along the ascension pathway, each in your own method and purpose and timing. There have been some deep caverns for many of you, but nevertheless you have begun to make the climb back up and have surpassed what you could only have dreamed of in the past. While living for a brief time in those caverns of darkness, you learn to make your own light, to light your own lantern in a way you have not been able to do before. You created within yourself a pathway to the light, and in the process you have extinguished many a fire of upheaval and chaos and fear and momentary loss, only to reveal an opening to the true deeper part of you where you find solace and peace and enthusiasm and hope. You, in your dipping into sometimes suffering and sometimes deep revelation, one and the same for all intents and purposes, have pulled the light of your soul ever present to the surface and have discovered an unfathomable strength, courage and creativity that remains unmatched in your experience. For you are discovering the deep creation abilities of the love that is your essence. In affording yourselves compassion and love even in your deepest darkest moments, memories, regrets or negativity, you have created an unfounded curiosity and innocence and yearning for better times, for better experiences, for loftier intentions, my dear ones, for you are the loftiest of creatures in the whole universe, made of material that is unequaled in its potential. And I give you my encouragement today to keep that intention of making something out of nothing, which as you know is not really nothing, it is the basis of your being, love. From the beginning of time you have toiled and troubled yourselves with experiences of grand nature in that everything you attempted or allowed into your lives for the sake of experience was an experiment in perseverance and creativity. You created situations from which you extracted solutions that uplifted you higher and higher in frequency and dimension. This has always been the case. But now you may notice that you seem to be going through many of those grand experiences at once, and many times all you can do is surrender and let go, and trust yourselves to find a solution that with a more expanded view, reveals itself and produces a creation of pure grace and wonder. You are discovering your potential to create what you need and desire by not giving in to the urge to analyze and control the outcome. Instead, you are discovering that by your divine intention to follow divine will and purpose for the greater good of all, you are creating solutions and services that have never materialized before. By trusting you can do this and allowing the spontaneous flow of creation, many of you are arriving at new precipices far above the old caverns of despair and uncomfortableness. You have embraced the unknown and the unknown has embraced you, and together you are fashioning a future in the present now that is forming right before you, of grace and wonder and purity. You sit within the majesty of it and feel gratitude, and even if you cannot always see the physical manifestation of it, you know you are creating something new and valuable by allowing yourself to accept yourself as you are in this moment, just on the verge of expanding and exploding into a greater you. You no doubt are feeling the truth of these statements, even though you may not understand it all intellectually, but the more you let yourself expand and flow within yourself and within your heart, you are discovering untapped potential. And for this you will feel most grateful and look back at how far you have come, while venturing deeper into the recesses of your heart. And that is the key, dear ones, gratitude for how far you have come and knowing that you have arrived at a new precipice and pinnacle of your awakening. All my love is yours. Namaste. Lady Nada. All right, very nice, very nice message from Lady Nada. That brings us to our meditation for today. So go ahead and close your eyes. Take a deep breath. And exhale. Take another deep breath. And exhale again. Now imagine yourself looking over your life. And as you look over your life, doing your review of where you've been, what you've done, you see things that could have done better and you see things that you've done very well. And you realize all that you have accomplished in this lifetime. 
And as you really look at these accomplishments, you feel good about yourself and realize that there's more to you than you often give yourself credit to and for. So you take a moment to thank yourself. You imagine looking in the mirror and giving thanks to yourself, thanking you for all the hard work that you've done. And then knowing that we co-create with the universe, with God, we give thanks to the universe. We give thanks to God for all that we have, for the abilities, for the talents, for the abundance, for life. We think about all the people that are in our world over all of the years of our lives that have helped us to get where we need to be or just helped us in general and we send thankfulness out to them. And we just move through the day looking at all things and finding ways to be thankful. And as we walk through life and we find these ways to be thankful for everything. We find life responding different to us. We find a very positive change occurs. As as if the doors of gratitude have opened the path of positivity before us. So we walk this path of positivity and we understand that abundance fills this path and love lights the way. So we continue on the path of positivity, prosperity, and light, and love. And we just let love send out. And we continue on this journey allowing our subconscious mind to keep sending out love and we bring our conscious mind back to the present moment on the count of three. Three, coming back to the present moment, filled with confidence. Two, coming back to the present moment, filled with faith. And one, coming back to the present moment, happy, healthy, and whole. Happy, healthy, and whole. Take another deep breath. Exhale. And open your eyes. That is it, my friends. That's the show for today. Thank you very much for being here. Have an awesome day. Just remember, with all the craziness in the world, we want to send out positivity. We want to send out love. I will change things. Believe me, each and every one of us can make a difference. All we have to do is make the effort. And the effort is no more difficult than saying, I'm going to send love into the world and let it be that. That's it. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Have an awesome day. I love you. Keep loving each other. Peace. I'm out of here.